again uh, welcoming you all to uh, online lesson number three in telecommunication principles uh, and as you can see on the screen the lesson uh, today uh, is about signals so we are going to start discussing uh, about signals uh, within the context of uh, electronic communication or telecommunications right uh, so under signals uh, we'll be uh, specifically discussing about the analog signals, basically the properties of analog signals. So we are going to look what, what exactly meant by the properties of a signal. And the signal type that we are referring to is analog signals during uh, the discussion happenings under signals part one. So in this module, we will be uh, having uh, three basic three lessons um, in, in this uh, set signals, signals part one, two and three. So part one is based on analog signals. Uh, then part two is uh, an extended uh, discussion of analog signals. Basically how we uh, make use of analog signals to uh, create discrete uh, waveforms, discrete signals. And then um, the other outcome right after coming up with discrete signals, uh, as we got to know, basically uh, by uh, digitizing, by giving a logical meaning to discrete levels, we, 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 we used to call them digital signals, right? So from analog domain, we uh, move into the discrete domain. Then for the discrete domain, we do necessary modifications you call it modulation after modulation you call it discrete uh, sorry digital so in signals part one we talk about pure analog signals in signals part two we talk about uh, discrete uh, generation of discrete signals based on analog signals then uh, what signals part three we discuss about digital signals just 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 some pop properties and uh, factors of discrete and digital signals. That is how uh, this uh, three lessons will be uh, going on. So we are going to start uh, signals uh, right now. Okay. So hope uh, the first two sessions went well and uh, the things we discussed uh, are already uh, now uh, with you all. So you you need to always learn new. Uh, areas by referring to always by uh, having a reference of the previous lessons. So lesson number one uh, just gave you a brief understanding about what is exactly telecommunication and communication systems. Uh, then uh, last session we uh, look into some uh, transmission uh, modes, transmission methods, how uh, uh, signal, so how, how these currents, how these voltage distributions were hanging around uh, these communication systems. So that is what we call transmission, right? Uh, OK. Um, so now we are going to learn signals. So all these signals, all these properties we are learning from right from from now onwards um, is going to uh, behave or is going to stay in communication systems. Now we were talking about transmission methods. So what transmits if I ask you what basically transmits from a transmitter to a receiver is a signal, right? So signals are uh, kept on transmitting. Tra what transmitter does? Transmitter takes an information input, uh, process the in information and outputs a signal, a communication signal. Right? Inside that communication signal, which comes out from a transmitter, we have two parts. One is the physical properties of that signal. Then the information, the meaning, the logical meaning interpreted on top of that uh, physical resources or the physical um, properties. So basically in a signal we have two cases, physical 
parameters or the physical properties then on top of that we have information uh, interpretation so both together you call it a signal okay otherwise it's just a current distribution or or else a voltage variation according to your um, knowledge uh, in electronics and electrical and electronics you call it a voltage variation or a current uh, let me say uh, it's a, it's an electron it's an electron flow right due to a potential difference electrons will flow you call it an electric current that's the physical part of it then in that current or the voltage variation distribution you have some special properties based on those special properties you get different signal shapes different wave formats wave shapes you must be referring to uh, triangular waves square waves sinusoidal waves sawtooth waves likewise there are a lot more different types of waves so all these wave shapes uh, and different conditions are based on the properties what happens in communication we identify those special wave properties and those properties we are using those properties to carry some information or, uh, or, or all these properties were being uh, will be or were being interpreted with a logical meaning that is what you call information so wherever you see a physical uh, set of properties or a waveform together with information interpreted for whole lot you call it a signal okay so now we are going to learn signals which are conveyed all the way through these communication systems right so um, base or the reference for the things that we are discussing uh, today onwards is based on uh, this book data communications and networking uh, fourth edition by forosan uh, forosan is the author and uh, the things that we are discussing in this session or uh, in this set of slides is based on the chapter number 3 uh, topic is data uh, and signals right data and signals uh, so i will be sharing you an e copy of uh, a, a, a scan copy of this uh, ebook uh, today uh, but unfortunately uh, we we don't have the uh, you know uh, what we call these diagrams and all uh, very much accurate and clear uh, because of the scan version um, i have the right ebook uh, in my office pc but unfortunately i don't have it right now with me Uh, in the future if i get a chance of uh, going to office definitely i will be copying that uh, ebook and uh, sharing with you all till then i will share the uh, scan copy uh, whatever uh, we have now so you don't want to worry too much about the diagrams uh, which are having you know some sort of uh, mismatching uh, other than that you can read the content so i will be uh, sharing the ebook with you today Uh, but make sure that you are not going to read everything because it's uh, about a different uh, you know area data communication and networking it's about computer networks and other networking so you don't want to worry about all this content but uh, i will uh, be specifically telling you what are the chapters or the particular pages that you need to read so don't try to read other more than that because it is out of the scope but for your knowledge for your betterment when you get free time you can go through the book never mind no problem at all but uh, if i talk uh, you know uh, specific to this module or this particular uh, discussion uh, i will be giving you uh, the necessary number of pages to read so that will i will explain that later but anyway i need to tell you that uh, the content found in this set of slides most of the content that i have extracted from this book Uh, so i have to uh, definitely uh, do the necessary referencing as well as the citation otherwise uh, it's not the right ethical way of uh, doing things so here you see uh, the copyright goes to the content most of the content that i am using here uh, copyright goes to uh, the publisher uh, the macrew hill companies uh, which is the uh, publication company of this particular book okay right
So uh, don't uh, misunderstand our our topic of this uh, discussion is not data and signals. Our topic is signals part one properties of analog signal. But that lesson is based on this book and this chapter. That is the idea. Right, so let's start now. It says uh, a statement to be transmitted. Data must be transformed to electromagnetic signals. Right? Data must be transformed to electromagnetic signals or else we can say um, signals must be uh, sorry information must be transformed to electromagnetic signal or the other way around you can think in communication systems you find electromagnetic signals right you find electromagnetic signals which are having information or which are modified according to the information which are processed specifically according to the information. Either way, right? Anyway, you need to understand electromagnetic signals. It can be electrical signals. It can be wireless electromagnetic signals. Or else in a common way, you can say with the signals which are having an electric field or the signals which are having both electric and magnetic fields. All these are signals. Physically, what you can see in the circuitry, physically, what you can see all along the communication systems. Uh, and when it comes to wireless application in free space, you see a lot of electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic signals. Your Wi Fi, if you are connecting with a Wi Fi, it's an electromagnetic signal. If you are connecting with GSM towers to do uh, discuss uh, uh, through phone calls, mobile phone calls, it is uh, electromagnetic radiation. If you are having any satellite TV connections, electromagnetic radiation uh, signaling. Uh, normal radio, if you are listening to radio or television, electromagnetic signals. Likewise, there are a lot more. Wherever you see wireless application, electromagnetic. If you see an optical fiber communication system, it is again electromagnetic. Why? Light signals or visible light can be laser light or uh, some other lights are also uh, types of electromagnetic radiation. So even if you are dealing with light signals, it is also electromagnetic signal. Apart from that, if we send signals through copper cables, copper cables or wires, metallic wires, you see electrical signals, right? Uh, the main um, mode of transferring information is uh, by interpreting information into electrical field. So when there is an electrical field uh, in a conductor, you know that automatically what happens is a magnetic field form across the or around the conductor. So you again have electromagnetism in the same frequency that it vibrates. So if you have information in a particular frequency F, so there will be a current flow with a frequency, alternating current flow with a frequency F, and parallel to that, simultaneously, simultaneously, what you have is a magnetic field which is having the same frequency F. So you again have electromagnetism, right? So that is why we say uh, to, to be transmitted, whatever uh, information, if you want to send it from one point to another, that has to be transformed or uh, converted to an electromagnetic signal, OK? Uh, speech have to be converted. Uh, then um, text have to be converted. Uh, pictures, colors have to be converted. A lot of things can be converted into electromagnetic fields and signals then keep transferring here and there. So that is what we say transmission or communication signals. This chapter will introduce data slash signal representation power computation and basic information theory, right? So you will be understanding uh, how this uh, data or how this information uh, represents, uh, represented by the signal, uh, by these uh, physical properties, then power computation. When it comes to signal, what sort of power levels that it has? 
the necessary simple calculations will be done and then basic information theory we are not going deep into that but we will be somehow dealing with uh, some brief uh, cases right about information theory what is information uh, things like that analog and digital now we uh, somehow know something because from the very first day we, uh, we, we in the first section also we got a chance of uh, clearing this too uh, a little bit uh, more and since you have learned uh, analog and digital electronics by now you have a you know solid understanding of what is analog and digital and when it comes to communication aspects i um, explain how can we call things digital uh, what you originally get is discrete then for that discrete what is the reason you call it digital later on so we understood okay so now you, you have to use that knowledge to understand the rest. So let's see what is uh, explained here. Data can be analog or digital. Okay. So you better replace the word data from information. So let me say information can be analog or digital. Okay. So in communication signals, you might see uh, analog digital both uh, domains, but uh, everything in uh, everything you have information consisting the term analog data or the term analog information refers to information that is continuous that is also you know analog means continuous information representation continuous always everything happens continuously digital data refers to information that has discrete state that is also uh, well known by now you know that what is discrete and all so uh, digital data the origination of digital data is discrete format for the discrete signals we give meanings after that you call it digital right furthermore it says analog data take on continuous values digital data takes on discrete values that of course you know by now because last time we understood uh, what is meant by continuous values and discrete values then you understood range and value in the very first day when you refer to a, a, a graph normally uh, the, the x-axis is what we call the range right x-axis is what we call the range whatever the parameter comes to the y-axis is what we call the values so when it comes to analog or discrete information, discrete uh, signals, uh, Y axis is always voltage most of the time. Uh, X axis is time. So range is time, values are voltage. So what we always refers to is how this voltage values keeps on varying in a particular time range. OK, so when it comes to that case, analog signals are having continuously changing infinite different voltage variations so you call it continuous digital data uh, is on discrete state or discrete values that means uh, time keeps on ticking but uh, the number of voltage levels are limited right there are a lot more constant uh, you know situation constant voltage situation so the, those type of things you call discrete value. So this is just uh, summarizing the things you learned uh, during the first two sessions. And this is just a recap for uh, the things that you learned or we discussed about analog and digital last two sessions. Topics discussed in this section. Analog and digital data. First of all, we will be understanding what is analog and what is analog information. Then digital and digital information. Then analog and digital signals when it comes to signaling. Right when it comes to signaling, uh, what sort of signals we have, how these signals behave, these type of things. Then periodic and non periodic. Signals or oh, for non periodic, you call it aperiodic. There's another uh, way of uh, pronouncing or introducing it. Periodic and non periodic. Let's discuss what are all these. Um, later point by point so these are the areas that we are going to cover uh, in this section 
right. So furthermore, uh, as a conclusion for what we were discussing so far, you have the note signals can be analog or digital. Analog signals can have an infinite number of values in a range. Digital signals can have only a limited number of values in a range within a range. OK. So here you have the same thing in another different way. Analog data are continuous and take continuous values. Digital data have discrete state and take discrete values. Uh, so when it comes to your domain, analog data example. Analog data example, analog information examples, we can say voice. Now when you talk into a microphone, the microphone outputs an electric signal. Uh, where we are going to take it to an amplifier, amplify it and send to a speaker. Uh, so what comes out of uh, microphone is analog information. It's analog electricity, analog electrical signals. Then when it comes to temperature uh, sensors. So you know what are sensors by now, hopefully sensors are uh, some some sort of uh, transduce a type of uh, you know components uh, where which is capable of uh, you know uh, generating an electrical uh, signal or an electrical uh, distribution uh, based on an atmospheric condition so temperature means an atmospheric condition so if you take temperature and electricity temperature and voltage those two factors are in completely two different platforms, but the sensor, electronic sensor, is capable of uh, understanding the atmospheric condition and accordingly there will be a voltage distribution or a current distribution sent out. Right, so those are some examples for analog uh, data, analog information. So these are based on what you know. Uh, all these cases now assume a temperature sensor. You are going to capture some temperature variation, and accordingly there will be a current flow or voltage distribution, which is analog, continuous values. You can uh, connect them, connect these sensors with a particular processing system and do necessary processing and those signals can be transmitted for a far distance by using a communication system. Right? By using a communication system, so that happens. You, you can arrange, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, condition monitoring. You can say name it atmospheric condition monitoring system, temperature, uh, then the air pressure, uh, humidity, things like that. You're going to simply design a system, assume, with a simple microcontroller and a little bit of uh, electronics uh, by using different sensors, motion sensors, smoke detectors, uh, putting all, all of them together and a, you know, handy system, uh, which is going to sense the condition of the atmosphere in many aspects. And all these signals will be processed by a processor, uh, basically a microcontroller and based on a communication system. We will be able to send all this information into a computer or a mobile phone application. So how this happens? We take this analog information or digital information, do the necessary processing and transmitting it. OK, so these type of cases you will be dealing with definitely in the near future. Uh, so it is very important to learn things and always link it with whatever the application possible. So here um, voice comes from a uh, comes to a microphone, grabs to a microphone, will be outputting an electric signal which is quite analog, uh, having the analog nature uh, and temperature sensors which is in the analog uh, range. Definitely outputs an electric uh, signal which is Again, continuous or analog. Some examples. Comparison of analog and digital signals. Or let me say discrete signals. 
okay comparison of analog and discrete signals or digital signals so here you can see uh, an analog signal uh, which is this picture justifies uh, the statements written in the previous slides it says uh, analog signals are having continuous values the values are continuous continuously changing i told you values comes with y axis uh, range comes with the x axis so range is time so within this time duration you see how much voltage variations are there voltage will not stay at a one constant level for some time always it keeps on continuously varying so that is why you call it continuous but when it comes to the discrete state when it comes to the discrete state you can see uh, there is no any constantly varying nature but what happens is you you see that some voltage values maintain constant for some time okay there are different levels that is true sorry different levels but in each level it it maintains the level for some time these are like clear cut steps right clear cut steps so you call it discrete uh, basically this is how we can uh, graphically uh, understand the difference uh, by comparing the two pictures we can understand the difference of analog system and a digital system or oh, analog uh, uh, voltage variation and a digital voltage variation okay or discrete voltage variation now for this discrete voltage variation if we can give a logical meaning for all these levels you call it digital based on the logic there will there will be some digits interpreted so right after doing that you can call it digital no harm done okay so i hope uh, with this point analog and digital is clear and what i kept on explaining in all these statements there are signals as infinite number of values uh digital are having very limited number of values you call it continuous and discrete likewise so everything will be justified uh, by these two uh, you know uh, pictures excuse me right uh, sorry about that interruption uh, anyway right so up to this point i hope that it is clear uh, with the levels uh, when it comes to continuous and discrete in data communications right in data communications that means information uh, or let me say it can be digital let's, let's see what is going to happen anyway in data communications we commonly use periodic analog signals and non periodic digital signals right periodic analog signals and non periodic digital signals so there is a statement given i know that this uh, the, the points uh, given here is uh, not 100% clear uh, for you for you now right now so we we have to uh, find more information uh, to make this uh, point clear for us okay so here we have some strange uh, you know uh, terms by that we call it strange because when it comes to the sub subject oriented the the the, the area oriented uh, understanding all these are having a technical meaning behind all these terms even though these are english terms but they have a technical meaning behind it so since we have no proper understanding about the technical uh, meaning we will not be able to uh, understand uh, the point that uh, has been explained so first we need to understand these strange terms then go and clear them out come here again and see uh, exactly what this particular sentence uh, is uh, meant for right so let's go and see what is periodic signals what is meant by periodic signals what is meant by non periodic or aperiodic signals periodic analog non periodic digital all these are having question mark so we have to first clear them out so let's go another step further so this is very important periodic signals versus non periodic signals so now we are going to look into what are periodic what are non periodic and compare between all these now 
by now since uh, you all are in the second semester uh, i ho i hope everyone knows what is a signal because you were always referring to alternating currents so there is no doubt in alternating currents right now okay everybody knows what is an alternating current it's a sinusoidal wave shape it is not the sine graph that's true because sine graph is quite mathematical and theoretical it is based on the trigonometric values of uh, uh, sinusoidal trigonometric values of uh, angles when it comes to a graph you get a particular shape uh, when it comes to alternating currents if you note down the voltage variations and try to plot a graph that particular graph exactly has the shape of a sine graph so you call it sinusoidal okay that is why we call this shape sinusoidal it is not sine but it is having the shape of sine okay having the shape of sine so that is why uh, you call it sinusoidal and now you know uh, alternating currents uh, in a one particular frequency and a peak voltage value if you are referring to an alternating current it carries this shape okay so here assume that this is an alternating current alternating current when it comes to this particular wave shape always there is a one oscillation completing in wave shapes you you call it oscillations now if you see this sort of a um, you know force distribution this sort of an energy application or this sort of uh, voltage variation based on potential difference this is having the nature of a simple harmonic motion that means a vibration right so this is a result of a vibration if you take a simple harmonic motion and try to plot a graph according to that motion according to the force distribution of that motion uh, force application of that motion you get the same wave shape so this is a simple harmonic motion wave shape that means there is a vibration when it comes to that if i ask you what is exactly a one vibration mean it is something like completing a one revolution completing a one cycle it has to complete a one cycle okay it has to complete a one cycle so how come that this cycle is completed now everybody of you know when it comes to this sort of a wave shape one cycle is completed from uh, this point uh, between this point and this point it's a one cycle you get the first half a cycle in the positive polarity then you get the next second half a cycle in the negative polarity put them all together uh, you get a one cycle or one oscillation that is the term one oscillation or in a very basic way you can call it a one complete cycle one complete cycle okay so this shape that you can see this complete shape you can see the positive domain the positive half a, half a cycle and the negative half a cycle this particular portion you call a one oscillation or you can call it a one complete cycle or a one vibration or a one wave component okay there are four names that you can use to represent this this, this particular portion here one oscillation one complete cycle one vibration one wave component okay one wave component this is a one wave okay now if you refer to the entire picture here if you refer to the entire part you can see the same shape the same shape appears again this something like copying this and pasting it you get a one complete cycle then you again get the same dimensions another one complete cycle exactly the same almost exactly the same not almost exactly the same if you 
try to observe further what you get is again a same complete cycle it keeps continuously going okay continuously going that is a one wave so in this wave how many wave components you have you have one wave component and the second wave component and a half so you have two and half wave components here I assume that we have some more space. We can draw the other half and it can be three components like. How the amplitude change? Assume uh, we, shall, we measure amplitude based on the um, parameter voltage. So here how voltage variation happens. But we have another axis range, which is time. So you have to consider the time as well. Now, since this is a one oscillation, you are identified that this is one oscillation or a one cycle. What is the time it took to complete a one cycle? That is from this origination point here to here. That is capital T. It says capital T. So period it took to complete a one cycle of voltage variation time it took to complete one cycle of voltage variation. Um, it is capital T and you call it the period of a one oscillation. Time duration of a one oscillation or a period wave period of a one oscillation. Or period it took to complete a one cycle. Either way that you can call it. The most important thing is to understand exactly what is the period of a wave. So here you see that the time factor it took to complete a one cycle is a period of a one wave. Now, what do you think about the second wave component? You see exactly the same wave component appears again. So what can you say about the time duration of that wave component? It is also exactly the same. Right, so here one wave for the first wave component. I hope everybody can see the mouse pointer going all the way along the wave shape. Can everyone see? Can someone please uh, uh, say that whether it's visible for you? Uh, because yes, I cannot. Sir. Right, good. OK, thank you. Uh, so now this is this is a one wave component. What I am showing is a one wave component. You see the exact dimension, the exact shape appears again for the second time. So since all these voltage variations are the same, definitely the time factor is also repeating same. So if I ask you what is the period of the second wave component, it is also capital T. If you go observe for some more further, you get the third wave component uh, spending the same time duration. It goes on and on. So more and more, more and more, more and more wave components adding or complete cycles revolutions adding but for each revolution the time it takes to complete a one resolution uh, revolution is capital T you call it the period of a wave period of a wave okay if you see in a signal like this where you get lot more oscillations going continuously on and on you call it a signal or a wave front wave form. If you see in a signal or a wave form, same period appears on and on. Or the period of a one cycle uh, is kept constant with, without changing. That type of a wave you call it a periodic wave or that type of signal you call it a periodic signal. That means the same wave period appears on and on. It, it is constant. It is not going to change. Right, period of a one wave component kept constant throughout the entire signal, entire distribution without change. OK, hope it is clear that sort of signals you call it periodic signals. Now here what you see is a discrete signal. This is a continuous signal. The second uh, wave shape is a discrete signal. You can call it a square wave if you want. No problem. It's having the square shape but uh, we have the both polarities. But this is discrete. We have uh, capital A 
uh, voltage level then again see negative a voltage level so this keeps on uh, you know shifting from capital a to negative a then negative a to capital a and that shifting is happening and it distributes if you think about a one shape how to identify a one shape now if you think that the first square that i am pointing out now here if this is a one wave component you don't see the same wave component in the next time duration you see the negative domain of it that means the first square is not the one not, not a component right first square is not a component but what you can see here is if you take the first positive square and the negative square together positive square and negative square together you see the same formation again positive square and negative square the same formation is repeated again that means the positive square and the negative square together is a one wave component it's a one wave component or a one signal component then you can see the same wave component or the signal component appears to the second time of the same distribution it appears again positive square and the negative square together same component appears now see first of all by looking into a distribution voltage variation or a signal like this you need to be very much keen on understanding uh, what is a wave component and exactly what is the wave the shape of the wave component now in the first one you identify you have a positive half a cycle but the next instance is again not a positive half a cycle if you get the same positive half a cycle in the next instance also then you can say that this 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 part is a one wave component but you don't get the same positive half a cycle appearing in the next instance it is a different shape it goes to the negative domain but then positive half a cycle and a negative half a cycle together you see that shape appears again as a as a one bulk it appears again that means this is a one wave component both parts together is a one wave component same thing applies here in the discrete format the first half is the uh, square is positive the second square is negative uh, if you get another positive square at the second instance then you can think this square shape is a one component but that ha didn't happen uh, has not happened here because it has gone to the negative polarity negative domain but then after you see that the positive and negative together is a significant shape that you see it comes again and again therefore this is a wave component the next step students once you have identified clearly identified the wave component then go and see what is the time duration of that wave component from zero to this point is the time duration of that wave component which is the period of that wave component you can call it capital t then you go to the next wave component see same polarities same dimensions same time span same time span the gap is the same so period is the same which is capital t if you observe further you you will be getting the third uh, time span as well that means this is a discrete format discrete signal or a discrete wave form which is periodic the same period occurs on and on the time duration of wave components are not varying it's not a variable it's a constant so the time component of a one wave component if it is constantly appearing on and on that sort of signals or that sort of wave distribution you call it periodic then what is non periodic is it to understand if you don't see wave components having the same time duration appears on and on those are non periodic so let's go and see examples for non periodic there you go non periodic so when it comes to non periodic analog continuous wave form this is not a uh, let me say uh, how can i say that uh, an alternating uh, 
type of uh, analog signal. This is what we call varying DC. I think we kept on explaining this also during the last two sessions somewhere we took this factor for the discussion. Uh, varying DC. This is a direct current. This is not an alternating current. That is true. Uh, the value is not constant. It is not constantly maintaining. It keeps on fluctuating up and down. Right? It fluctuates up and down. But everything happens in the one specific domain. It is only happening in the positive domain. So you cannot call it alternating. The current direction is not changing. Only the voltage values keeps, uh, keeps going up and down. So if you try to think applying this for a circuit, the current flow is always in a one direction. So it is not alternating. But the voltage values change. So you call it direct current, but varying. So in this case, in this case, you don't see the same one particular wave shape. You cannot identify a one wave shape. And uh, even though if you have identified a one wave shape, you don't see the same shape appears on and on. on. Right. Uh, this is quite unpredictable. The voltage variation is unpredictable. It goes up, it goes down and uh, the shape variation is not happening in a particular, you know, constant rate. So you get a shape like this, which is. Uh, uh, basically called non periodic because since we cannot identify a one specific wave component, there is no chance of uh, agreeing with the time or a period and to check whether we get the same time span again and again or whether we get the same time period again and again. Since we cannot agree with the one time period, we cannot see. So this is non periodic exactly. No, there, there is no uh, specific period to consider. Non periodic. Now assume mm, if I shift this entire voltage variation a little bit down, if I shift it down, what will happen? Let me show you something. Uh, first, I'll uh, take the print. Sorry. Screen. Give me a second. <clears throat> All right, uh, let me take uh, the wave component. Like this. Sorry. Oh. Right now, hope everyone can. Can you see the uh, pain platform? Are you uh, with me? Pain platform. Is it visible, students? Yes, sir. Right. OK, so what I have done now is uh, I have uh, taken the entire voltage variation and shifted downwards, shift it downwards a little bit. OK, I have shifted it downwards a little bit. Uh, so now you can see an alternating case. Now this is not uh, a varying DC anymore. Now this is an alternating uh, type of a signal. You can see which is start from the negative domain. 
uh, it goes to the positive, then again uh, go down to the negative, back to positive, down to negative, then back to positive, then it keeps on varying in positive, coming to zero, increasing up, then again coming. So this is uh, again uh, an alternating current. This is also non-periodic. So now since I, am, I was referring to a non-periodic signal, which is a varying DC, uh, some students might think that uh, when it comes to non-periodic, definitely that has to be uh, DC, varying DC. Uh, in non-periodic, we don't see any uh, alternating type of cases, no. So to clear that doubt only, I'm doing this exercise to show you, uh, even with a situation like this, even with a um, alternating situation like this, if we cannot directly identify a one specific shape one specific shape occurs on and on. Therefore, we cannot discuss about a one specific time duration comes on and on. Therefore, these type of cases are commonly called non-periodic or aperiodic signals. Okay, aperiodic signals. So, both in alternating cases and varying DC cases, varying direct current cases, you can find a lot of uh, non-periodic uh, type of distributions. Is that clear? Is that part clear? What I have explained? Any any questions in this? Right. So no questions coming so far. Let 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 me uh, continue. If you are having any doubts, can, uh, uh, questions, please shout out. Uh, so that I can uh, answer time to time. So anyway, now you, I hope you understood what is non-periodic continuous signals. Let's move to discrete. Right, discrete. Now here uh, you cannot um, agree or you cannot specifically say, right? This is the wave shape. Why? Now here see the very first instance. This is the wave shape. Values are zero. But at the next instant, it jumps up to a certain voltage level and maintain for some time duration. Maintain for some time duration. Now, if you think that, uh, right, okay, um, you all see almost the same time durations in the first instant and the second instance. So if you think that, right, this is the wave shape, if you if you assume that you are thinking that right this is the wave shape but you don't see the same wave shape comes again in the next instance the next instant is a completely different unpredictable case the entire time duration is zero then it jumps up to the higher level and it it is going to stay for some more time then again falling down to zero say staying some time likewise so you see there is only two voltage levels that is true two voltage levels that is why we call it discrete but you don't find the same wave shape as you saw here you don't find the same wave shape occurring or appearing on and on every instant the shape is predictable unpredictable and it is a different shape so we cannot then uh, agree with a particular constant time span which we call a period because you don't see the same time period occurs on and on since we don't have a constant shape these type of discrete signals you call it non-periodic discrete signals right so now if i ask you can if you can whether you can distinguish between periodic and non-periodic signals see whether you have an answer for that see whether you have an answer for that do you know uh, the difference between periodic and non-periodic now? Because the topic for uh, this slide is uh, periodic signal signals versus non-periodic signals. So now I hope you, you are all right with this part. Any questions with this? Periodic and non-periodic. Is, is everything clear? Can I continue? Uh, 
right. I have completely uh, losing y'all, right? No idea what's going on uh, because no one, no, no one talks. At least no one types, so I don't know whether y'all getting me properly or, or at least getting my points. So it's it's your responsibility to reply uh, because um, otherwise it's in vain. Okay, I can uh, simply keep on delivering because it's recording. But uh, if you are not going to take the benefit out of it, it is really in vain of uh, both parties uh, time and effort. Then again money. So keep that in your mind. Anyway, uh, since nothing comes from your end, I'll keep continuing at least for the recording. OK. Uh, <clears throat> now we are moving to periodic analog signal since uh, we identified, we understood what is uh, periodic uh, and non-periodic means since we know that now we can now move to specifically discuss about periodic analog signals or periodic continuous signals okay uh, can be classified as simple or composite. So now, now there are there is a very important fact here to understand. What are simple analog signals? What are composite analog signals? Very important, right? So I want you to point out these terms because uh, the, these are key terms that you need to know the meaning. Uh, because everything will be discussed by using these key terms from today onwards. Periodic analog signals can be classified as simple or composite. That means basically we can divide it to two parts. A simple periodic analog signal or you call it a sine wave cannot be decomposed into simpler signals. Right now if you refer to this, this is the original wave shape. If I ask you to decompose this, and find out, uh, now let's say for example, the ingredients of it. Find out the sub factors of this, you don't find any. Because this is the most original wave shape, most initiative wave shape, right? So that sort of a thing is what we call a simple wave shape. So here what you can see is a simple wave shape, okay? Here what you can see is a simple wave shape. It says periodic analog signals can be classified as simple or composite. A simple periodic analog signal or you call it a sine wave cannot be decomposed into simpler signals. If I ask you to decompose, you will not be able to further decompose and find different different signal shapes components because it's it's the original shape. There is no more else. Those are simple type of wave component. A composite Periodic analog signal is composed of multiple sine waves. All right, then what is the meaning of a composite signal? the composite kiyane. What is composite? Composite means we are going to make use of simple signals. We are going to combine several simple sinusoidal signals and take a different outcome. It's a mixed outcome. It is something like dumping uh, two or three different simple sinusoidal waves into a container, mixing them all and taking the output to see what is the shape looks like. That shape is a composite shape or you can call it moreover, you can call it complex. Then you will understand what is meant by composite complex. We basically compose a different result by using some basic components, Compos composition, composition happens. OK, now people compose um, songs, people compose music, how they do it. They take different different instruments <clears throat> according to a particular time, uh, you know, duration or a timing. Uh, a particular rhythm, what they do is they keep on uh, playing the musical instruments most of the time. What happens is they they get wave shapes. 
when they play the guitar they get a wave shape then they sing they get a wave shape uh, when they play the um, keyboards they get a wave shape uh, when they play the drums and all they get a particular wave shape and then again a rhythm likewise so they put them all into a mixer mix them together and do rec necessary recording you call it composition all these mixed wave shapes are called it composite or uh, composed wave shapes which are very much complex which are very much complex so those are not simple wave components those are complex wave components right so try to understand the meaning uh, of a simple uh, signal and a composite signal so i hope it is uh, clear with you right uh, so periodic uh, when it comes to composite periodic analog signal it, it is composed by mixing up several uh, or multiple different sine waves periodic analog signal is used as a data carrier such as am and fm radio so we take a periodic analog signal and we can make use of that periodic analog signal to carry information from one point to another so that basically happens in uh, uh, am and fm radio communication systems if we get a chance uh, during the module uh, let me see whether we can uh, whether i can uh, show you some uh, techniques of how it happens uh, which is out of our syllabus but uh, if if i get a chance if time permits us to do when i am teaching uh, the further uh, levels i will uh, try to explain how it happens right let's see uh, topics discussed in this section is sine waves wavelength time and frequency domain composite signals and bandwidth so let's see uh, what is going to happen when it comes to periodic analog signals now everyone knows that this is a sine wave why that we call this a sine wave is because this is sinusoidal okay this is sinusoidal this is a sinusoidal wave so short form we call it sine wave why that this became a sinusoidal wave because this carries the same shape that you see in a trigonometric sine function graph so this carries the same shape of a trigonometric sin uh, sinusoidal uh, so, sorry sine function graph so you call it sinusoidal therefore to make the long story short you call it sine wave okay right now it's clear so this is a sine wave uh, which is having a particular time period because this is the wave component appears on and on so the same time period appears on and on so this is a periodic sinusoidal signal right so uh, here we have t capital t is equal to 1 over f i will explain that later for now try to understand what is a sinusoidal so here you can see a sinusoidal wave shape next important thing that you need to understand is sine wave parameters okay the term parameters are very very important and this is the most critical thing that most of the students will not understand and identify don't forget that you all are learning to become uh, engineers right uh, can be in the electronic domain can be in the electrical domain or in any in any other type of uh, application like uh, automation biomedical etc etc there can be many other openings for you in all these cases what you have to deal with is uh, systems okay what you have to deal with what you have to interact with what you have to design what you have to troubleshoot are systems so when it comes to systems to design to troubleshoot uh, to upgrade to do whatever uh, required thing you need to first understand the system so if i ask you a question how will you understand a system what is the method of understanding a system answer is you need to uh, you know uh, what you call have a perfect understanding of what are the parameters what are the system governing parameters 
and the levels. Out of the parameters, which parameters are variable parameters? Which parameters are constant parameters? Okay. What are what are depending parameters? What are independent parameters? All these needs to be properly understood. Then you will understand the system from the parametric level. OK, so there are two levels of understanding when it comes to engineering concept wise understanding. Just a conceptual understanding. Then parametric level understanding. Conceptual understanding is what we do now. I'm just giving you some ideas like right? this and that. This is how this looks like. This is a sinusoidal wave. This is what you call the period. This and that. Those are concept concepts. What are parameters? Now we are jumping into that. Learn about parameters. When it comes to sinusoidal signal, sinusoidal wave, instead of calling it uh, a sinusoidal wave, uh, why can't we zoom it a little bit in? We are going to zoom into it and see what, what, what are the components we can see. It is like zooming into a material and try to observe the atomic structure of it. So when you zoom into an atom, you see a lot of electrons, you see protons, neutrons, this and that they call. I don't know, but they say that they can see a lot of things. When you zoom into a living cell, you see, uh, you know, there is a cell wall and liquids inside a mitochondria, you know, they say a lot of things. I don't know. Uh, again, it's up to them, uh, but according to what we learned during our school days, those type of things we can zoom in and uh, observe. Likewise, you are zooming into a periodic analog signal. You are zooming into a sinusoidal signal. What are the particles you see? That is what we call parameters. So when you perfectly understand the parameters and the um, you know uh, proper nature, the behavior of the parameters, you will definitely understand the signal or the system. So as engineers, if you still try to learn things based on its conceptualized manner uh, you take my word uh, that is the bitter truth i know it's really hard and bitter but uh, that's the truth you will be ending up uh, become be becoming someone else but not an engineer or you will be ending up becoming someone else uh, who does something but not uh, designing things or not uh, keenly working in these in engineering platforms. Because you, you learn things only from its concept. Right? Uh, or just the system, how it works. Or basic technology of it, just the technology of it. But you don't know exactly the reason, what are the parameters, what uh, why these circuits are uh, in this format. Uh, now, the main concern when it comes to electronics, circuit analysis. Now you'll be getting a chance of analyzing circuits. You were learning analog electronics, digital electronics basics, doing necessary practicals, whatever it is. Then based on that knowledge, based on the knowledge you are going to gain all the way through the semesters, uh, there will be a thing called uh, circuit analysis. Uh, I think it's in the uh, third semester, maybe in the fourth semester. It's a uh, high end module. Uh, high-end core module, so you will be learning about that, how to analyze signals, uh, analyze circuits. So when it comes to analyzing circuits, what we analyze is, we analyze the parameters. Based on the system parameters, only you get the components decided. Then again, based on the system parameters and the requirement, you get the circuit arrangement. So if you want to understand the circuit arrangement, you need to understand the parameters and the outcome, the required outcome. Otherwise, it's just a circuit um, diagram in front of you or just a physical circuit in front of you. You're not going to understand anything out of it. So therefore, you will not understand the system completely. Then you are not an engineer in that system. Right. Very basic to understand. Okay. So that much important learning things from its parametric level. 
now i am trying to show you the parameters of a sinusoidal signal i am using a very simple application simple example to teach a critical requirement that should have or a critical uh, uh, habit uh, there should be with a engineering student right so i am using this sinusoidal signal Uh, to teach the parameters of it as well as to let you understand the importance of parametric level learning if you don't know the factors if you don't know the critical factors you will definitely will not understand you are not getting a solid chance of understanding the complete mechanism but as a story you can say this is what happening with this device but nothing else can be done you cannot think about an upgrading of a system you cannot think about uh, new innovation uh, new system innovation you cannot thinking about performance improvement of a system you cannot think about integrating another system with this existing system e mukut hitanna ba all these are not possible if you don't know the parameter parameters and the parametric level of operation right so it is just a qualification uh, printed on a paper you call it certificate in hand but uh, nothing happens furthermore so i don't want you to end up yourself end up your life or end up your journey at a point like that so this is second semester high time uh, now you all are somewhat matured students because you totally uh, went through the first semester and uh, most of the basics are done you you already have the basic knowledge so this is high time to start thinking uh, about this if you have ever ever heard the word analysis or analyzing i hope every one of you might have heard at least uh, a, a one time during your lifetime about this analyzing and uh, don't know whether you know that engineers always have to analyze engineers have to analyze things why do you learn mathematics is because you need to analyze uh, situations happening why do you uh, learn physics you you had to learn physics is because you have to scientifically understand what is going on you need to analyze if there is a problem to solve because engineers are to solve problems that's what everyone says as well as yourself think so um, engineers are to so solve the problems before solving the problem you need to analyze the problem now everywhere it comes the term analysis what is the meaning of analyzing if you don't know parameters if you have no understanding uh, a system based on its parameters there is no chance of analyzing it no point of talking about analysis that means no point of thinking about becoming a engineer if you are to become an engineer you must be capable of analyzing things if you need to analyze things you need to know what are the parameters and how important knowing about the parameters of a system now i hope you understand the link uh, between the things you learn and your end goal what is the end goal becoming an engineer one day not just an engineer on a paper but engineer who physically does things uh, which can be recognized by others right so let's see what is parameters of what are the parameters of a sine wave peak amplitude you are dealing with this peak amplitude when it comes to uh, your electronic applications especially when you are learning uh, analog electronics you might have uh, observed these peak amplitudes in uh, oscilloscopes just sending a uh, current input to the oscilloscope letting it uh, visualize through the screen uh, then uh, you were referring to the peak amplitude then it says voltage peak to peak that means uh, the magnitude of the wave from positive peak to negative peak what is the voltage range how many volts peak to peak then average voltage rms voltage all these are measures that you take out of an alternating voltage distribution alternating voltage distribution those are the parameters 
So the, the most important parameter when it comes to communication is the peak amplitude. The maximum strength of the signal measured in volts. Now it starts from zero and slowly climb up. Strength keeps on increasing and it goes to the peak value. That means the maximum strength, maximum power of the signal. Then it come back down, go to the negative. The most minimum power uh, when it comes to logic, but in the other way around, uh, again, it is the maximum power in the opposite direction of current flow. Then again, it comes up. Likewise, it goes. So peak amplitude is a one important parameter. Important parameter. Second important parameter when it comes to a sinusoidal signal is frequency. Frequency is another parameter. Frequency. Let's see what is frequency. It says rate of change of signal. Rate of change of signal. Now it is something like velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. That is from mechanics. If you think electronics, electrical, uh, what is voltage? How to define voltage? Voltage is a vector quantity. So how to define voltage? Hmm? How to define voltage? No idea. Electrical students. So you need to find, right? Note down. You are fail in that. So you need to point out that question and find out answers. Otherwise, you are in trouble. Uh, the next question. Um, how to define a current, electric current? That is easier. Like acceleration. The rate of change of voltage is current. Right. It can say you can say that uh, when it comes to uh, uh, rate of change, it is like uh, dy over dx or, or delta delta v over delta t dy over dt is a. Uh, sorry, I. Okay, current. I is equal to dv over dt. Differentiation of uh, voltage based on time. Um, voltage okay. is uh, the difference between uh, difference in charge between uh, two points. Yeah. Yeah. Difference be, difference of the charge charge intensity uh, between two points. That means rate of change of what is it? Charge density. Okay. Rate of change of the charging density, charge density or charge intensity. When you take the one particular uh, time duration, what is the charge in a particular point in between two points? What is the what is the variation? Then in the next instant, what is the variation? Likewise, OK. Uh, <clears throat> so voltage is uh, that is voltage difference. Voltage difference is uh, what is the intensity uh, charging intensity? Positively or negatively charging intensity between two points. Uh, when it comes to uh, current, that is the rate of change. Where it comes, uh, the, how, how, what is the uh, rate? Uh, when it comes to time, what is the rate of this voltage keeps on changing? Based on that, there will be a particular current flow variation. So that is what we say. Anyway, uh, that is rate of change. Now I hope you understand what is rate of change. So here when it comes to frequency, it is rate of change of signal. Now let's see what it is about. Now here, if we refer to this, uh, oh, sorry, the sine wave here. OK. Always when it comes to rate of change, uh, according to the SI standards, we get uh, second, one second as a, a SI unit when it, when it comes to measuring time. The fundamental unit of measuring time is one second. So the definition of rate of change is always based on one second. Meters per second, coulombs per second is voltage. Uh, then voltage per second. Uh, 
meters per square second likewise that goes always it comes per second revolutions per second how many cycles will be completed how many revolutions will be completed or how many revolutions are there in a one second time duration how many complete cycles are there in a one specific second how many oscillations are there in a one specific second or how many wave components are there in a one specific second is what we call uh, frequency okay so one second is the si unit for all these rate of change uh, according to time so here if you assume that from this originating point of this uh, graph this is where the originating point comes x axis 0 y axis 0 Uh, from this originating point up to this point where you see the mouse pointer now if you think that the time duration is 1 second from here to here from point origin to point uh, the point a here for example time duration is 1 second now see within this 1 second how many complete cycles are there 1 2 and 3 so within one second you get three complete cycles or three revolutions three oscillation three wave components okay so this is the rate of signal rate of change of signal within a second how many signals keeps on occurring that is what we call the frequency so when it comes to sinusoidal signals or sine waves the uh, most important parameter is frequency that means how many wave components are there inside a one second time duration okay or basically if you think about a period capital t how many capital t portions are there within a one second time duration okay how many capital t portions are there within a one uh, second time duration that is called frequency measured in hertz uh, why do we call it hertz because uh, this concept were been um, uh, introduced by a mathematician called uh, hertz to be honest i cannot remember the first name of that mathematician uh, but uh, her, his surname is hertz so to credit the uh, you know the resource person uh, in, in in the world recognition of the whole world it says hertz Uh, H is it, right? Hertz, uh, which is the uh, unit of uh, measuring frequency. Now, for example, uh, in this X, what you call graph, in this signal, you find three signal components within a second. Therefore, this is three hertz. What is the frequency of this uh, pink color wave shape? You you could sell it. You could you can sell it. You can tell it that it's three hertz. Why? three revolutions within a one second three hertz uh when it comes to period period of a one signal it is equal to time it takes for a one repetition that means uh, when it comes to repetition all the time the same signal components come on and on if you take one that is the time it takes for a one particular wave shape we call it period uh, the symbol is capital t that is another uh, parameter uh, and t is equal to capital t is equal to 1 divided by f now what is f f is frequency now you understand what is frequency you understand what is frequency once you understood frequency now it's time for us to understand the relationship between frequency and the period of a one wave component period of a one wave component the relationship is period of a one wave component is inversely proportional inversely proportional to the frequency not directly proportional inversely proportional so you get uh, t is equal to uh, inverse of f that means 1 now if 1 is a constant so when you put the constant you can uh, end up it as a equation so t is equal to 1 now f 
inversely proportional. More and more the frequency time duration of a one wave goes down. If frequency is less, time duration is uh, or, a, or a period is uh, higher. OK, I will discuss that later. So here that's why I told you I will um, discuss this later because we got we have to know what is frequency. Then only we can understand what is uh, the meaning of this equation. Now I hope you understood. I will further explain it um, in the next instance. The next uh, most important parameter is phase. Not FACE phase, PHASC phase. That is again what we call the phase angle or the angular position of the wave. So when I am explaining that, I will explain everything in detail. So these are the main wave parameters. So whatever we do with the signals, we always uh, interact with all these physical parameters. If you want to do a change, if you want to introduce a change into a signal, you have to use uh, either one or many of these parameters and do necessary value modifications. Then you will see the wave is varying. Right. When you see the wave, then you see the wave is varying. So if you get a chance of doing a practical, um, we can make use of uh, uh, the MATLAB uh, software. There is a thing called Simulink, uh, option called Simulink. We can make use of Simulink and just do some simulations for wave outputs uh, and see how it works. Unfortunately, um, I don't have a uh, Simulink uh, installed in my computer. Uh, because the processing speed is uh, not to the standard. This is a simple laptop that I'm having in my home, so I don't have. Otherwise, uh, I could have shown it how it works. Let's see uh, if, uh, if the situation permits us to at least go to the office. I'll try to open uh, the uh, interface and uh, at least demonstrate by sharing the screen. But uh, let's see if I get a chance. Definitely, I will do it. Uh, how? Uh, the appearance of the wave shape changes by doing modifications for all these parameters. OK, so let's uh, hold it for some time. So anyway, these are parameters. Uh, still, you have no idea about exactly what is meant by. So we have to have more discussions further. So since uh, I kept on talking uh, around like one and a half hours continuously, uh, I would like to give a small break for you all uh, around. Right, so what we kept on discussing was the just the pointing out of uh, the main parameters of uh, a sine wave and the importance of uh, knowing things in a parametric level. Right. Uh, so let's go further. So here it says. Uh, the two signals with the same phase and frequency but different amplitudes. Now, since, since we saw <clears throat> the main uh, three parameters here, peak amplitude, frequency and phase. Now what we are going to do is we are going to keep the frequency value constant and a phase value constant. Then see uh, when peak amplitude changes, what has happened? So here you see frequency is constant. How come? Now, if you think that from the origin point up to this point, it is one second time duration. If the time duration is one second, you can see in the both wave components, time duration is one second, right? Uh, reaching this point, right? One second time duration. Within one second, in the first wave, wave uh, front, what you have is one, two, and three components. So frequency is three hertz in the first wave shape. If you think the uh, consider the second wave shape again, you have one complete cycle, two cycles and three cycles. Frequency is the same, right? The only thing has changed here is the height. You can see the first shape has a greater height compared to the second shape. Uh, the height is a bit uh, lesser than the first one. OK. Uh, face angle is where the what you call uh, uh, the wave starts, <clears throat> right? So first I'll 
do something to let you understand exactly what is meant by the face. Okay, if you don't know what is face, it's it's a problem here to understand. Uh, saying that there is no face difference. If I say that, you have no idea. You will not understand, right? Uh, so let's see how we can deal with it. Right, face. Mm, the parameter uh, symbol is theta. <coughs> when it comes to sinusoidal uh, function, sinusoidal wave function, you have um, simple V is equal to capital E sine omega t plus theta. Right, sine omega t plus theta. Don't worry if you have no idea about the sine function. Uh, we'll be discussing it later. Anyway, there is a component called theta. Theta represents the face angle or the angular position of the waveform. So what is face? The definition says face describes the position of the waveform relative to time is equal to zero. When, when it comes to a distribution, when time is equal to zero, um, the face angle or the position of the wave component is what we call the face angle. Okay. Now here, before that, I will take you to the pain platform. Okay, uh, let's uh, take a new one. I'm going to take a circle. Okay, now here we have a circle. <coughs> Assume uh, if we say this point is A, we hope everyone can see. This is point A, point B, point C, and point D. Okay, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Now assume that we are going to start our journey at point A. Okay, we are going to start our journey at point A and walk all the way around the circumference of the circuit. So that is our journey. So this is the path for our journey. We are going to start from point A and walk all the way around uh, this uh, circumference. But there is a logic uh, when we are walking. There is a logic uh, that we need to use when we are understanding the situation. When we are transferring downwards, right? Starting from A, transferring downwards, you have to consider it as positive. Okay. Going upwards, going upwards have to be considered as negative. Okay, have to be considered as negative. That is the thing you need to understand. There's a logic. <clears throat> now, let me say, uh, first of all, I will, uh, uh, sorry. We'll draw mm. there's a graph as well. Now 
what we are going to do is based on the journey. We are going to plot the graph. Based on based on the journey, based on the direction as well as the given logic, we are going to draw a graph uh, and see what is happening. Now assume you are starting at point A. Now you are in point A. Then you started transferring all the way along with this uh, circumference, the transferring all the way down to B. Okay, so you are coming to B. You have come to B now. Started from A, walking all the way through this circumference and uh, <clears throat> transferred to B. Direction is positive, right? Because we are going downwards. We are going this way around. So direction is positive. If you consider this line where you can see line AC, that is the neutral line. That is the uh, neutral state. When you transferred from A to B, what has happened is the height is elevated. You can see you are somewhat in a higher range, higher level compared to the starting neutral line. OK, starting normal line, you are you are having a somewhat height elevation. <coughs> positively increased. In the positive direction, it, it has positively increased. So now if you think about this direction, uh, it is positively increasing direction. OK, positively increasing. So if I start uh, considering this uh, any initial transferring and plot it in the graph, this point A is on the normal line and this is the originating point. So I'm going to keep my point here. Keep my pointer here. And draw. The journey. Sorry. Right now we have drawn the journey. <clears throat> Second. OK, we are drawn the journey. This is point A in the graph. This is point B. AC line, you see the AC line. This horizontal line is the AC line. This horizontal line is the AC line, which is the neutral line, the normal line. Right, normal line. Let's see the ground level. Now, when you transfer from A to B in this um, curved path, your vertical elevation is positively increased. So now you have a positive value. You have a positive value, right? You have a positive value. Then you further keep moving from B to C. Your motion happens in the second instance. You started your, your start. You start uh, walking towards C. So now when it comes to C, when you are in C now, what has happened? Still the direction is downwards. That means still you are in the positive domain. But this time it happens in the reverse direction. Positively decreasing. Still positive, but positively decreasing from the topmost point. It is coming down again, coming down to the neutral line, the normal line. <clears throat> so let me draw that part. like this. So we have come down to zero uh, again, zero line. This is point C. Right? This is point C. Now next from point C. From point C <coughs> to point D, we are moving to point D now. Then the direction of transferring has changed. Therefore, the logic has to be changed. Direction of transferring has changed. Therefore, logic has to be changed. Since now it is aiming upwards, when it is transferring, it is aiming upwards. 
the logical value will be uh, changed to negative domain. So it goes to negative. So when you transfer from C to D, again what has happened is you again get an elevation. From the zero point, you get an elevation in the reverse direction. By reaching point D, elevation wise, you are reaching the topmost point, right? Topmost point. So then you take your values. And it will come to a situation like this. OK, it will come to a situation like this. And this is point D. This is point D. Then further from D to A again, from D to A, keep keep going from D to A. Still it is moving upwards, so it is negative. But what happens to uh, the elevation? Now this goes this direction. It is negatively increasing. And now it comes in, uh, in, in the other direction backwards like this. Again negatively value wise decreasing uh, and coming back to zero. So this is the zero point coming back to zero. Right. So here from here what it happens. It goes like this. And come to zero. This is again. Let me say point E. Right, so let me call it point E here. Right, point E. So it has come to point E. Now in this journey, what you were doing is you were transferring uh, quarter by quarter. Quarter of the circle, then again, secondly, the second quarter of the circle, third quarter of the circle, fourth quarter of the circle. That's how you have completed the cycle. So here also, based on the logic and the movement, and based on the heights that it is going, it is it is kept on elevating, elevating throughout the journey. Uh, we have plotted the graph. Now you get a sinusoidal shape again. With how many domains? So if I get a uh, chance of dividing this, you you get four domains. Right, four domains. You get four domains. Assume that these are domains. Now I, I want to think you. Uh, I want you to think <coughs> from uh, angle of transferring. Now things from think from angles. Let's think from values. Okay, let's think from values. Now here, what you can see is there is a displacement from A to B. Linearly, there is a displacement. So what is the displacement? Displacement is the length of this arc, right? Length of this. Uh, this part of the circumference of the circle. Right? In meters, assume in meters or in centimeters. From A to B, circular length, which is a linear length, uh, it is in centimeters. But there is another type of displacement when it comes to uh, circular applications, when it comes to circles, when it comes to rotations, there is another type of displacement you must know. That is what we call the angular displacement. Angular displacement. If you think about uh, someone is sitting on the originating point, on the center point, and looking at the person who is transferring, straightly looking at the person who is transferring all around the circumference, what happens is this vision line keeps on transferring. If there is a vision line, that vision line keeps on transferring like this. Okay, vision line keeps on transferring. All, all the way along the circle, the vision line keeps on transferring like this. So if you think about this vision line, as you can see now, this vision line, 
is uh, having a displacement based on its angle. The angle is zero. Uh, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 60, de uh, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70, 80, 90 degrees. 90 degrees transferring. Uh, then uh, 120, likewise, it goes to 180 degrees. Then it goes to 270 degrees, again 360 degrees. That's how it goes. Okay. So if you think about this line of vision, line of sight, if you think about this line of sight, there is an angular displacement, right? From here to here, the angular displacement this line of sight has is 90 degrees. So when you transfer from A to B, you have transferred exactly 90 degrees angle as an angular displacement. Okay, angular displacement is 90 degrees. So this point here, I should say this is Ninety degrees, right? This is zero degrees. No, no, any angular displacement. Zero degrees. Zero to ninety degrees. Now, what we are doing is actually, students, we understood a one complete cycle based on a normal, uh, ordinary revolution. Uh, we understood a one complete cycle and the <clears throat> graphical meaning of it. Now, based on the angular displacement, we are going to give angular meanings. We are going to give angular meanings for the wave position. Now, these what I what I am taking my pencil point all the way through is wave positions, different wave positions. If I point if I not a point like this, it's a wave position, the peak position. The, uh, then again, I'm going to uh, note down where the wave cuts the X axis. It's another position. What is the angular displacement at this position? We are referring to this circle and finding out. Then we are going to write it down here, giving that angular meaning for that wave position. Now let's see if you have a line of sight at B. Someone is looking at you. So when you keep transferring towards C, the line of sight further varies. So you have 90 degrees here and it further goes another 90 degrees. So when you have completely transferred from A to C, your line of sight, the person's line of sight has transferred 180 degrees. The complete 180 degrees half a cycle transferring. So here, this is 180 degrees. Right. Hope you can at least understand it. It's hard to write from the mouse. Well, anyway, 180 degrees. So this position here is 180 degrees. Furthermore, from C to D, another 90 degree. C to D from another 90 degree. So 90 plus 90 plus 90 from the originated level up to D, 390s. That means 270. So you get at point D, you get 270. What you get is 270 degrees. OK, 270 degrees. Point D is 270 degrees uh, wave position. Likewise, when you go further, another 90 degrees, you get 360 degrees. At point E, your line of vision has completed a one cycle, total complete cycle. So it's 360 degrees. So when it comes to point E, it is 360. Right, 360 degrees. So these are the wave positions, the main uh, basic wave positions. So if you take right uh, the middle of this gap, you get 45 degrees. Right, this wave position is 45 degrees because half of 90. Right, 45 degrees, half of 90. Then again, half of this green color, you get 135. 90 plus 45, 135. Likewise, we can divide as much as we can. And based on this angular position, angular displacement for this waveform, we can give uh, angular names. We can name the position by using angles. So that is what we call angular positioning. 
wave positions are mentioned by the angle angle value these are what we call phase angle these are what we call the phase angle now here uh, when it comes to uh, this particular wave shape okay if you think about the x axis if the x axis is time okay if x axis is time at point a how can you explain this at point a means time is zero when point a comes its time is equal to zero so at time is equal to zero what is the angular value of the wave shape it is zero right angular value of the wave shape is zero when time is equal to zero so oh, angular positioning value of this wave at time is equal to 0 is 0 degrees there is no phase difference exactly it is starting at phase angle 0 so this type of a signal we call okay uh, <clears throat> we call it uh, let me uh, write it let see whether you can understand in really hard students sorry about that um <clears throat> in phase okay in phase signal this is in phase there is no any phase mismatching no any phase differences nothing when time is equal to zero angle is zero positioning angle is zero okay positioning angle is zero now what happens assume now i'm going to draw something see whether you can see this instead of starting from zero now this is this is an in phase signal okay what i have drawn is an in phase signal but in red ink what you see now sorry right so you have a dotted line now uh, here right so this if you think about the red color wave shape when time is equal to zero this is capital t uh, sorry simple t uh, assume that this is voltage y axis is voltage when time is equal to zero the black color wave is in phase because there is no any phase uh, the different angular position when time is equal to zero angular position of the wave form is also zero degrees but when it comes to the red color wave shape you can see that when time is equal to zero right when time is equal to zero the particular wave is having an angular positioning value that positioning value is 90 degrees okay that positioning value is 90 degrees so you call it the red color shape or red color wave shape is having a 90 degrees okay 90 degrees Really hard. Uh, 90 degrees phase shift. Okay. Red color wave has a 90 degrees phase shift. 90 degrees phase shift. If we think about a blue color wave, assume uh, it is something like this. Okay. the blue color wave this is the what is the wave position if you start from here 0 degrees 90 degrees then uh, ending of the positive half a cycle is 180 degrees see 
ending of the positive half a cycle is 180 degrees. So you see in the blue color line, when time is equal to zero, blue color line is 180 phase shift, right? Right, 180 phase shift. Likewise, now try to understand what is the meaning of uh, the term phase. Okay, the meaning of the term phase. Excuse me for a while. Right, um, sorry. So we were here in phase. Now, see, students, in this picture, based on what you learn here, what is exactly phase mean? Phase mean is the angular position of the waveform angular position of the waveform. Now you know how this waveform has come to the graph like this. Then based on the revolutional logic that we had and the uh, exact angular displacement, um, how these uh, meanings were being uh, interpreted into this wave shape, angular meaning. So for that angular meanings, you call it the face position, angular position. So based on where the time is equal to zero. Based on where the time is equal to zero, if we have different angular positioning values of different waveforms, you call them different phase angles or phase shifts. OK, uh, starting from zero degrees, that is an in phase signal. But starting from different other positionings, you call it with different uh, whatever the number and phase shift. OK, so if you Concentrate on these waves. The first wave is zero degrees. No phase shift starting from zero position. When time is equal to zero, wave position angle is equal to zero. So no phase shift. This is an in phase signal. Second picture, second graph. See, when time is equal to zero, what has happened? A one quarter cycle of the wave shape has been shifted quarter cycle, quarter of the period have been shifted. So therefore, at the starting point, we have an angular value. So voltage is peak at that time. When time is equal to zero, voltage is equal to the peak value. So this is 90 degrees. When it comes to radians, it's pi divided by two. Right, 180 degrees divided by two, it's 90 degrees phase shifted. Right, the phase angle is 90 degrees. In the third example, as we discussed, uh, if you think about from where the wave starts initiation, the wave initiation when time is equal to zero, that initiating point wave is having a different angular position. Wave is having a different angular position. So that is the phase shift. That is the phase shift. So this is uh, in radians pi. That means 180 degrees phase shifted. Okay, 180 degrees phase shifted. Okay, so this is what we call phase, right? Now let's go back because we were uh, in peak amplitude. Now this says two signals with the same phase and same frequency. Now you see, you can check now. This wave shape starts at angular position zero when time is equal to zero. The second wave also the same. It starts at uh, phase angle zero or, or positioning angle zero and time is equal to zero. So both are in phase and there is no any phase changes. So phase is constant, frequency kept constant. Only thing differed here is the peak amplitude. Now based on this picture, you must be clear with what is meant by peak amplitude and peak amplitude variation. So when you 
vary the peak amplitude this is what happens to the wave shape right this is what happens to a wave shape either it it broader it, it broaders the magnitude much more or it, it goes down it shrinks down right it expands or it, it shrinks either either direction based on what we do so this is what we call uh, uh, what do you call introducing a change to a one parameter by keeping other parameters constant right this is a very important uh, uh, thing that we do in engineering do in analysis not in not only in engineering wherever we do analysis based on uh, factors we do this we keep uh, some parameters unchanged we keep them constant and we do change a one parameter value and see what is happening to the system what is happening to the mechanism okay now see you you saw that frequency is constant phase angle is constant but amplitude change see what has happened now you were learning about amplifiers right in analog electronics you were learning about amplifiers at least you you, you must have gone through the circuits all uh, what are the components and all what the amplifier does amplifier does the same process it doesn't touch uh, it is not going to touch the phase angles it is not going to touch the frequency but it touch it do the modification only to the peak amplitude right it do uh, at uh, either uh, increase or decrease when you decrease the volume it decrease the power it decrease the peak level if you increase the volume what happens is the internal resistance goes down therefore power of the signal will be much more it is going to get much more uh, gain more broader so that is what happens based on an amplification right okay so try to understand uh, the parametric level and basically the parametric level of all these uh, scenarios but ampli amplifier does it keeps the frequency and the phase angle of a wave of a signal constant or unchanged but it changed the peak amplitude okay it changed the peak amplitude you see this application in communication aspects right so now you somehow identify the uh, one thing based on the parameters of sine wave peak amplitude frequency phase let's see what is frequency now you already know uh, the definition for frequencies it says the frequency is the rate of change with respect to time how many complete cycles how many revolutions within a one second with respect to time change is a short span uh, change in a short span of time means high frequency change over a long span of time means low frequency all are in very uh, short point form uh, which is uh, easier for you to keep the point in mind uh, so take this uh, you know uh, as your short note and try to keep the points in mind change in a short span of time what is a span of time in the sense means let me take you back now here this time if i if i take this particular line from here to here it's a time span right uh, or else from here sorry from from the origin point to the end point here it is also a time span so you can define time span according to whatever the requirement you have time span means a small time gap so when, when we are referring to graphs we, we use the term span okay time span <clears throat> so what it says change in short span of time means high frequency change in change over a long span of time means low frequency let's see how to graphically justify these statements frequency and period are the inverse of each other frequency is the inverse of period of the wave period is inverse of the frequency so inversely proportional as we told it. so let's see uh, how to conclude all these statements there you go now here uh, both the pictures both the graphs are having the same time consideration from the origin point uh, right from the origin point 
to this this particular level here point here time duration is 1 second from here to here time duration is 1 second you can see that it's mentioned okay now if i ask you to count the number of wave components included in this time span you better count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 it is already mentioned here but i i just wanted to count and show uh, because this is the first time that we do with you all and you see here uh, one wave component highlighted or colored in red okay so that that, that is to let you easily identify uh, a shape of a one wave component so see how many wave components you had you had 12 wave components within a one <clears throat> second time duration <clears throat> 12 wave components that means 12 periods same period same period comes again and again so 12 periods so 1 over t is equal to f 1 over t is equal to f so if the periods including in a 1 second is 12 so 1 over 12 is what we call frequency 1 over 12 is what we call frequency so forget about that for a while having 12 complete cycles within a 1 second means frequency is 12 hertz <clears throat> okay that is no no point of wasting time because we understood it previously so here we have 12 complete cycles same wave shape 12 times within a second frequency is 12 hertz second wave second wave same time span the bigger time span is 1 second within this 1 second count how many wave components are there so you have given uh, a one wave shape highlighted so see how many similar type of wave shapes included 1 2 3 4 5 6 so six wave components included within 1 second therefore frequency of the second wave shape is 6 hertz 6 hertz 12 hertz 6 hertz which one is the greatest frequency out of 12 hertz and 6 hertz if i ask you what is the greatest frequency answer is 12 hertz 12 hertz is the greatest value so frequency 12 is great 6 is lesser now go back to the statement change in a short span of time means high frequency change over a long span of time means low frequency when it comes to high frequency think about the changing time span from this point onwards you get a change another cycle then you fulfill the same t gap capital t gap then again it has a change then again it has a change again it has a change so every capital t time duration you get a change so this in this free uh, 12 hertz uh, frequency wave that means the greatest frequency wave what you can see is the time gap capital t gap is less 1 divided by 12 as a value if you evaluate it 1 divided by 12 okay 1 divided by 12 why 12 is the frequency period is equal to 1 over frequency so 1 over 12 so capital t is equal to 1 over 12 so you get 1 over 12 1 over 12 times the uh, 12 times of that then you get 1 second when it comes to lower frequency what can you say about the time span of change changing time span is still capital t but this time since the frequency is 6 period is equal to 1 over 6 so if you think from arithmetics 1 over 12 and 1 over 6 if i ask you to compare which value is greater if i ask you 12 and 6 to compare and ask which value is greater definitely 12 is greater but when you take the reciprocal 1 over 12 and 1 over 6 1 over 6 is the greater value okay 
lesser the denominator, value is greater. So greater value. So period is greater. So it, what it says, since frequency and period is inversely proportional, when you increase the frequency, period will be decreasing. When you decrease the frequency, period is increasing. So with low frequency wave shapes, period is greater. When high frequency wave shapes comes, period is less. So that is the meaning of these two statements. Change in a short span of time means high frequency. Change over a long span of time means low frequency. Yeah. Long span of time, then again a change comes. A long span of time, then again a change comes. That is low frequency. If you see the gap is little, that is high frequency wave components. Now hope you understood. Right? Hope you understood. Same phase, same amplitude, but frequency different. Now out of the parameters we previously kept the phase and frequency constant and we changed the amplitude and see what sort of a shape change happening then you understood the height of the signal goes down now in the second instant what we do is we keep the amplitude peak value constant without changing then we keep the phase angle in phase in both cases, no, no phase changes, but we do slight variation to the value to the parameter frequency and see what happens. So this is what you can see more and more and more the frequency. All these waves are getting near and near. So the T capital T time gap always goes down. Getting minimized because frequency is high. More the frequency, lesser the time gap. Lesser the frequency, more the time span. Okay, that is what you can see here. So this is another important uh, variation uh, that we do in communication signaling or when we are interpreting information in, into signals. Okay, so hope it is clear. Units of period and frequency. Right, units of period and frequency. The first uh, part of this table shows the units of period. That means uh, time related uh, prefix and, and the fundamental unit. Then frequency related fundamental unit and its prefix. What is meant by prefix? Now, by now you know the engineering, in engineering we were using this. Uh, when you have 1000, you can say it is 10 to the power 3. Right? When you have 1 million, you can say 10 to the power 6. Okay. 1 and 6 zeros can be represented as 10 to the power 6. Likewise, if you have 1 over 1000, 1 divided by 1000, uh, it is 10 to the power negative 3. This is a little bit of uh, index loss. 10 to the power 3 goes uh, under the line the index uh, sign changes to negative. When it is positive, it goes uh, reciprocally, the, the sign changes. So 1 over 1000 is 10 to the power negative 3. You call it milli. Milli. Fundamental unit is seconds. The time or the period will be measured in seconds. So when you have a 1 second divided by 1000, that means 10 to the power 3, uh, negative 3, you call it milliseconds. This is the prefix, milliseconds. Microseconds, when you when it comes to micro, um, this particular micro symbol has a value which is 10 to the power negative 6. That means 1 over 1 million, 1 divided by 1 million. So microseconds can be written as 10 to the power negative 6 seconds. Likewise, nanoseconds 10 to the power negative 3, uh, sorry, negative 9 seconds. Picoseconds is 10 to the power negative 12 seconds. Likewise, further it goes to ne negative 15, negative 18, likewise. But to be honest, I cannot remember the names uh, right now for 10 to the power negative 15. But we have some, right, some more. Uh, based on uh, different uh, subject areas, like, you know, when it comes to chemistry, 
when it comes to um, quantum physics and all, uh, they have some more uh, lower values. So accordingly, some names. But to be honest, I cannot really uh, remember. I have seen two or three times, but I can't remember. But up to this point, uh, we we are dealing with. Especially when you are dealing with uh, capacitance in in analog electronics. When you are talking about capacitor values, you know that uh, the unit always normally it's very rare that we uh, directly deal with farads. We always go millifarads, microfarads, nanofarads, picofarads, likewise. That that much lower values. Uh, then um, when it comes to um, inductance you call it henry's milli henry's micro henry's normally it's very rare that we directly use the fundamental unit most of the time when it comes to calculations you always get some milli micro nano range values so you the, all these values are not uh, strange for you all you know okay uh, so if you move to uh, uh, what do you call this uh, frequency uh, when it comes to 10 to the power 3, you know that you call it kilo. 10 to the power 6, you call it mega. 10 to the power 9, you call it giga. 10 to the power 12, you call it tera. Likewise, further we have, again, uh, I have no uh, no idea actually uh, about the other, other, other terms. But anyway, uh, up to this point is enough for us in communication. Uh, so there is a uh, relationship here. That is why these two are in 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 uh, one row. So when when we are measuring time durations in second, normally the frequency ranges are in the hertz range. But uh, if you see that if the period of a one wave is in milliseconds, a period of a one wave is in, in milliseconds range. That means capital T is in milliseconds range. Uh, frequency range goes up to kilohertz range. Yeah. If this gap is milliseconds, uh, most, most of the time the frequency of that, those type of waves will have kilo, kilohertz range. That means thousands, thousands value. Right? 2000 hertz, 2500 hertz, 3000 hertz, likewise. Thousand values. The kilohertz range. If you see, Capital T time spans are measured in milli range, millisecond, uh, sorry, microseconds, micro range. In those type of applications, definitely the frequency has to be in the megahertz range. Very high frequencies, megahertz range. Likewise, nanoseconds, gigahertz range. Gigahertz range. Now, normally, uh, FM radio. Uh, are in megahertz, uh, which is uh, 88 megahertz to 180 megahertz. Most of our GSM uh, signals are in still in the megahertz range, uh, like around 800 megahertz, 1000, uh, 9, 900 megahertz, 1200 megahertz, 1600 megahertz, 1400 megahertz. Likewise, there are different different uh, channels, but still in the megahertz range. Uh, then when it comes to uh, Wi-Fi signals are also uh, somewhat upper megahertz range and some are in gigahertz. Uh, when you go for satellite applications, okay, uh, satellite TV or satellite communication, satellite weather forecasting systems, satellite based uh, networking, internet uh, transferring, things like that. Uh, otherwise, how come uh, this uh, aircraft get internet access? Have you ever ever thought about aircrafts? They have internet access, but um, they normally the, the aircraft fly over around like you know several feet, like eight thousand, nine thousand, twelve thousand feet uh, upper than the uh, ground level. So there is no way of uh, having direct interaction with GSM towers or any other uh, communication system. So all these aircrafts, if they are having this uh, internet access. Uh, they are having all these navigation systems, everything. If they still have their triggering of uh, the direction that they move, uh, the path of what they are, what they have to, uh, you know, take. Everything is there. So all are having communication, proper communication, real-time communication. So how it happens? 
it happens based on the satellite systems all these uh, navigations for airlines navigations for uh, marine ships ships everything uh, is based on satellite systems uh, in, how, how come the ships get internet do they have uh, optical fiber cables all the way running uh, from land down to the ships no uh, do they have gsm towers nearby no they are in the deep sea uh, far away from the land several kilometers far away from the land uh, then how come that they get internet access how come that they get communication how come that they get uh, television uh, channels and all all through satellite communication right so when it comes to satellite uh, applications uh, most of the time the frequencies are in the gigahertz range okay there are different bands 3 gigahertz 4 gigahertz uh, 6 gigahertz 16 gigahertz 12 gigahertz likewise there are ranges okay uh, but when it comes to terahertz there is no any uh, communication application uh, still works in terahertz but uh, there can be other super powers and stuff like that with people uh, with people who are doing things uh, mysterious things they might be doing those things in the terahertz range as well as upwards but in electronic application so far we have no um, any communication aspects run in terahertz range maximum is gigahertz right so these are some uh, uh, additional stuff uh, based on the frequency but uh, what you need to understand is since period of a wave and the frequency are uh, inversely proportional parameters Uh, when you are dealing with milliseconds when it comes to uh, period frequency goes to the kilohertz range so that is what uh, mentioned in these two statements now see students these are just two statements you can simply read it and forget about it but if you read to see whether you really understand and if you find out that you don't understand it very well what you need to do is without simply discarding it you have to chase behind the knowledge you have to start finding things when you start finding things you will get a lot of information that you can learn a lot of uh, additional things so if there are things that you really can't understand definitely you have to fight with it but you are going to get the benefit without losing anything if you fight definitely you are going to win the war Uh, and then you know learning a lot of things so see uh, so far we kept on discussing lot of things by trying to justify these two statements that's what happens okay right so i hope uh, frequency is clear with you before we go for this example let me see whether you are having any questions any questions students this on no uh, there was a particular definition for frequency and for uh, the peak uh, i'm sorry for frequency and uh, the other one was uh, period phase period. is there anything for uh, the peak amplitude you mean a definition yeah like uh, you know the ones you uh, highlighted in green Mm, I highlighted in green. Let me see. Ah, uh, uh, no. Peak amplitude is just the maximum or the topmost point of the voltage distribution. Now, yeah. Now uh, let me show you. Uh, uh, now, what is this? This is a voltage distribution. Now, since this uh, y-axis values are voltage, what you can see is different voltage values all the way uh, along this time time span. voltage keeps on varying so out of the out of all the voltage values peak amplitude is the maximum positive voltage that you see in this distribution okay clear yes sir thank you right so there is no specific definition for it but uh, that is how you have to explain it when it comes to a voltage distribution that means set of voltage values the maximum positive voltage is the peak amplitude positive peak amplitude right hope it's clear with you
Any any uh, any more questions? How about others? Right. Seems more questions. So let's see. Uh, we have some more time. Let's see. Uh, how far we can go. Right, there's a small example. It's a simple thing uh, based on what you already know. The power we use at home has a frequency of 60 Hertz. Some says 50, some say 60, but uh, assume it's 60 Hertz. That means uh, the alternating current that you get from all these plug points in your house uh, is having a frequency of 60 Hertz. See now whether you can understand it exactly. You kept on saying that frequency is 60 hertz, even from uh, you know our O level uh, or grade 10 science. We used to say that frequency of the power we get is 60 hertz or 50 hertz. What is the real meaning of that? That means if you try to understand this wave shape, there are 50 complete cycles within a one second. Within a one second, you get 50 complete cycles. So what they say, uh, let me see what it asks from us. The power we use at home has a frequency of 60. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, is 60 hertz. The period of this sine wave can be determined as follows. The period of the sine wave. Now, if the frequency is 60. Right. If the P, uh, if the frequency is 60, period is 1 over frequency. Period is 1 over frequency. Capital T is 1 over frequency. That means basically what we do is we take 1 second. 1 represents a 1 second. We take 1 second divided from 60 because inside a second we get 60 cycles. So when you divide it from 60, you get a 1 period. So here, there you go. Capital T is equal to one second divided by frequency. That means one second divided by 60. You get 0 0.016666 seconds. OK. Um, means. Now see a little bit of uh, prefix here. You can take it as uh, 16, right? When you take this uh, decimal point up to here, that means you're jumping three times to the right side. It, it can be 16.666 or 16.67. Or 16.67 times 10 to the power negative 3 seconds. Now, if you get 16 times 10 to the power negative 3 means you are going to take this decimal points backwards. And it becomes 0 0.016. These are a little bit. You know, uh, basic mathematics, all, all of you know, know this by now, so I don't want to waste time. Uh, but just to explain what has happened here, because uh, I am the one who is uh, presenting this, so it's my responsibility to tell you what has gone here. OK, right. So the, what I have done is I have uh, taken this uh, value in seconds and I try to uh, interpret a prefix into it. So I have taken it uh, into a nice value like 16 by moving the decimal sign to the right side, but it has been um, what do you call uh, regulated by putting a mathematical value here, 10 to the power negative 3. So now we can write 16.666 times 10 to the power negative 3 seconds. And this 10 to the power negative 3 has a prefix meaning called milli. Yeah. Yeah, 10 to the power negative 3 has a meaning called milli, milliseconds. So instead of writing 10 to the power 3, I can write it as milliseconds. So 16.666 milliseconds. This is the period of a one wave component if the frequency is 60 hertz. Now think if the frequency is 60 kilohertz, if the frequency is 60 megahertz, what will happen? Very simple. 
normally you know that when you apply values into free uh, into into equations into formulas all the values have to be its fundamental state okay having kilohertz here you cannot put 1 over 60 it has to be 1 over 60 kilohertz that means 1 divided by 60 times 1000 or 10 to the power 3 okay so appropriately you will be getting another value so i want you to change this uh, red color value in this question by different different values that uh, according to what you like right 1000 milli 1000 uh, kilohertz 3 gigahertz uh, um, 800 megahertz likewise do apply different uh, frequency ranges and values and try to find uh, the period values of Uh, each wave component that is just for your uh, further practice so i want you to do it uh, at least with a few uh, more free frequency values for homework uh, now the next question express a period of 100 milliseconds in microsecond this is just again uh, just to let you uh, be all right with uh, this milli micro nano uh, you know interactions So express a period of hundred milliseconds in microseconds. See whether you can deal with this. Express a period of hundred milliseconds in microseconds. So you have to convert it to microseconds and write, as I did here. Seconds into milliseconds. A seconds value have been written in milliseconds range. Now here, a milliseconds value has to be written in microseconds range. See whether you can do this. There is no any telecommunication or no anything here. This is simple. Uh, <clears throat> how can I say that? Simple uh, mm, mathematics. Uh, simple mathematics. Is you were doing all this in physics. You were doing all this in uh, you know all the way throughout uh, the semesters with different uh, scenarios. So this is not a big deal. See whether you can deal with this. Right, solution says from table 3.1 we find the equivalence of one millisecond. One millisecond is 10 to the power negative three, and one second is uh, one millisecond and one second. The equivalence. What is the equivalence? One second is equivalent to one into 10 to the power negative three milliseconds. One second is equivalent to 10 to the power 6 microseconds okay so see whether you can understand we make the following substitutions 1 milliseconds if you think about a 1 millisecond 1 millisecond is equal to 1000 microseconds okay Because one second is equal to thousand milliseconds, one millisecond is equal to thousand microseconds. It goes thousand by thousand. See. Now, ten to the power negative six. If you multiply ten to the power negative six with a thousand, what will happen? Ten to the power negative six times ten to the power positive three. Negative six, positive three. Answer is negative three. So when you take milli microseconds, and when you multiply microseconds from thousand, you get milliseconds. When you take milliseconds, multiply it from thousand, you get seconds. So what is the uh, 
uh, factor right multiplication factor between each is 1000 so if you want to convert milliseconds into micro you have to divide by 1000 right if you want to convert seconds to my milliseconds you have to divide seconds by 1000 milliseconds to microsecond you have to divide microsecond to nanosecond you have to divide from 1000 but if you have to take in the other way around like the reverse direction nanosecond to micro multiply nanosecond from 1000 you get micro multiply micro range from 1000 you get milli multiply milli range from 1000 you get seconds now this question let you practice that then one millisecond is equal to 1000 microseconds therefore 100 milliseconds is equal to 100 times 1000 microseconds 100 times 1000 microseconds altogether 10 to the power 5 microseconds okay so 100 milliseconds means 10 to the power 5 microseconds because they are asking you to write down it in microseconds not in anything else so what you can do is uh, you can make it uh, 10 to the power 5 microseconds otherwise uh, you can further do it 10 to the power um, how much Ten to the power. Uh, let me say six. In nanoseconds, how to convert this to nanoseconds? If I ask you to write uh, hundred milliseconds in nanoseconds, how much will you get? One millisecond is thousand microseconds. 1000 times 1000 nanoseconds that means 1 millisecond is 10 to the power 6 nanoseconds so you get 10 to the power 6 times 100 10 to the power 8 nanoseconds so you get another 10 to the power 3 here so all together it becomes 10 to the power 8 nanoseconds so 1 millisecond or oh sorry 100 milliseconds is 10 to the power 8 nanoseconds but in microseconds it's 10 to the power 5 right so I want you to again apply different different values to these the same question, same question format, but different values and do some more practicing. So you will be getting used to this. So we are taking this opportunity to uh, fix some uh, some sort of a basic, uh, you know, requirement. A period of a signal is 100 milliseconds. The period of a signal is 100 milliseconds. That means the time duration of a one wave component is 100 milliseconds. What is its frequency in kilohertz? When it is milli, definitely what you are getting is in kilohertz. So what is going to happen here? We get the equation F is equal to 1 over T. When F is equal to 1 over T, T becomes 100 milliseconds. So milli has to be 10 to the power negative 3. So 1 over 100 times 10 to the power negative 3. Okay. 1 over 100 times 10 to the power negative 3. Because it's milli, you have to get rid of this prefix when you're applying it to a uh, formula. 1 over 100 milliseconds. Then what will happen? This 10 to the power negative 3 can be taken up it becomes 1000 positive 3 so 1000 divided by 100 right 1000 divided by 100 sorry see uh, whether you can deal with this So what I have done here is to show you something. They were asking you to write the answer in kilohertz. Now I what I have done is without changing the formula, what I simply done is I have transferred this 10 to the power negative 3 upwards. So it becomes 
Here already we have one, one times thousand divided by hundred. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this one from hundred by keeping thousand as it is. So one divided by hundred is 0 0.01. Okay, one divided by hundred is 0 0.01 times thousand hertz because F is equal to hertz. So 0 0.01 1000 becomes kilo as the prefix. 1000 means 10 to the power 3 becomes kilo, so kilohertz. Without writing 1000, I write K. So 0 0.01 kilohertz. Okay. So whatever the time span which is having 100 milliseconds as a one wave component is having a frequency of 0 0.01 kilohertz. 0 0.01 kilohertz as a frequency okay as a frequency if it is in hertz how much if i ask the value in hertz how much thousand divided by 100 answer is 10 so you can say frequency is 10 hertz but in kilohertz it's 0 0.01 kilohertz okay hope it is clear uh, now we are in phase since you understood what is phase i want you to uh, just go through it, right? Just go through it. We we will discuss uh, the phase, uh, the questions related to phase uh, next week in the next session because the time is up now. Uh, but up to phase, up to phase, you need to uh, know everything. I will uh, share this one for you. Wait one second. Let me uh, crop this and make it as a you know picture so that you can easily refer uh, let me save it for you Right, so uh, when you are studying, when you are recapping, you have to uh, come up to this slide, right? Uh, about phase, up to phase. So we have covered the three properties of uh, the main three properties of a, a simple uh, sinusoidal analog wave form. Uh, let me go to the sharing part. I will share the document. Right, so you get the picture uh, which I kept on using to explain the phase uh, angle or the angular position of a waveform. So you can refer to this as well, right, while you're going uh, through the uh, slides again. So with that note, uh, that's it for the day students. Thanks for staying even uh, 10 minutes uh, more than uh, the given time. Really appreciating all your, uh, you know, patience and, uh, you know, presence in the session. So before we leave, see whether if you have any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, any critical questions, you can ask now. Uh, so I just want to know, are you uh, going to give us a slide? I think I have uh, shared it, isn't it? In the beginning? No, right. I'll do it now. One second. Sorry about that. I forgot to share. Yeah, no worries, sir. <laughs> right. Signals uh, part one.
as when it comes to the PDF uh, audits, uh, most of the solutions for the uh, practice problems were being given. So please uh, be honest in that case. Uh, don't go through the solutions at once. Give a try. Give an honest try with the question, and then uh, with whatever you did, try to uh, you know verify it with the given answer. Right? So then, then you can make use of that uh, in a in a good way. Otherwise, uh, it's in vain. Right. So I have shared the uh, set of the slides for the session number three. So hopefully uh, we'll be uh, you know discussing this uh, this set of slides next week also because we have a lot to uh, discuss in this uh, even though the number of slides are less but uh, details we need to cover is much more since these are basics so once you understood it very well uh, it will be easier for you to deal with uh, especially uh, signals and systems uh, the other module that you are doing uh, and and the later parts of this module okay Right. Any more questions? Uh, till I take down uh, all your numbers for the attendance. If you are having any questions, please let me know. Okay, uh, attendance uh, is done. Since have no uh, sound from your end, hope everything is all right so far. Uh, please, uh, again, I'm recommending you all to go through uh, the session, the recording, as well as the slides and see whether you are really understood everything. If not, please let me know next week, right? Nothing to worry about. Nothing to be shy, nothing to worry about, nothing to stay, uh, you know, uh, backward. Please shout out and let me know everything that you are having doubts because we need to clear everything. You are here to learn, I am here to teach, so there is no any problem, you know, uh, doing that. So with that note then, without wasting uh, more from your time because you must be tired uh, listening to uh, the session uh, for more than three, three hours actually. So really appreciating your patience and uh, looking forward to see you uh, again online next week with another uh, important session. Right till then, uh, be safe and responsible. If you have any doubts, if you can't stay uh, until we meet next week, you can still keep posting the problems or you know uh, emailing me so that time to time I can help when the time permits. Right. So then. Uh, Right. Keep well till we meet next week. Good luck everyone and goodbye.